welcome to Pixar Control. As said, it's an ask me anything question. So please jump right ahead and you know just um, do interact with us. Um, this was what Control looks like. It's our fourth tab. And um, who was Pixera actually for when we actually started it? Um, we were thinking of having our own place of programming with our own API. The API, as you might know, is growing like day by day and people do really, really lots of interaction with our API. But usually you had to have your own programming host. So it had to be Crestron. Um, or any kind of host, it would have to be, you know, people would use uh, their own Linux server, put some Node.js on there, and um, just do their own interactions with our API. Now, we obviously want to have a place where we, you know, like could program against our own API. So, welcome to Pixar Control. Um, so, this is our Pixar module. So, every session starts with a Pixar module. And the idea was, what do we want to do? First thing we want to do is, we want to create user interface to interact with Pixar and control. So welcome to the user interface builder. So when we come in here and we grab our new module, we say add UI, and then we create buttons, we create the sliders, the faders, and our, any, any kind of interactive things we want to have here. Um, let's pop that away. Goodbye. Now, we prepared something here, and this is a really, really simple user interface, and we can open that up in our user interface builder, and um, we can open that up in our web browser. That web browser has its own URL, so you can capture that with any kind of iPad or, or tablet or any kind of interactive uh, element you want to have that displayed on, you know. Um, so that's your user interface. And we have our buttons, uh, we have our faders, and how would we do that? How we get the information here? We go into the buttons, we have the run mo mode up here, we take it out of the run mode, and now we call up the module Pixera, and inside the Pixar module, this is everything that the API actually gives us. So we could, um, you know, it's like we could navigate through the, uh, the whole API. And yes, I want to remote control in time number one, and I want to set it to play, obviously. So um, inside, let's save that. And this, the so same thing, gives us the Pixar timeline. Show that just drag that around and time number one give me all the cues that we have and let's trigger q2 to trigger q2 we just say it okay apply and then we just say that and then off you go this down here there's a monitor label so the monitor label is uh, down here and go here and that we want to target against the module pixera and Pixera, come here, Pixera, and Timeline 1, and get me the hours, minutes, second frames. That's the way that we actually did that here. Okay. And now we can interact if we put it into run mode. Okay. Uh, the amount of pages is not limited. So we can have um, as many pages as you'd like here. Um, obviously, you can create buttons that can remote control your pages. You can switch to pages. You can switch to views. You can switch to other views on other modules. Okay. So let's touch it down. Okay. There was really a short introduction. Here we have, the question is, how can, can we make it nice? It obviously, yes, we can do so. Let's open that in the browser. And uh, we have implemented, uh, integrated a couple of icons here, uh, a couple of sliders, uh, buttons. And right now, what we do currently to, to for all the styling is we interact with CSS. So we have all the CSS stylings. You can directly put in your CSS code here 
or you can interact, you can add um, style sheets, custom style sheets, and uh, then you just call your classes inside of your um, user interface element. Okay. Um, CSS, I don't know if you're all familiar with it, but usually um, most people know how to program CSS when they're um, doing some some programming interface programming. It's a wide range. Uh, it's a wide language that's being spoken in HTML programming, a restrictive class. Okay. So here we did the following. We have, we just you know that just brings us from page to page. Okay, we have another another thing that w what we did here is I created an, um, a transparent user interface. And coming over here in our compositing, um, let's go to the web. Uh, we did some. I did something. I put that. I I called in those um, those uh, interfaces that I created here, the buttons. And let's load that up. Let's see what it does. Now this, we, we are actually projecting this button or this web asset that we created here on our, uh, on our display. And um, actually I can now interact with that button um, via my display. So if that would be a touch, um, and we have the feedback into via USB into the computer. That touch would end up and um, triggers that action that we have programmed behind that button. And this brings in the page two, and which is just another button. Yeah. So that's the idea of you know creating interactive elements and key system behind that. Okay. Any questions? Remember, it's an ask me anything. Okay, good, thank you. Good. Okay. So as you might have seen, um, a button just uh, does one action. So if we come in here and have more actions, um, we come in here and we create an action with do right click, it's like add action. And now we can add as many actions as we want here. So we come in here and do timelines, timeline one, do a play, pick Sarah, whatever, timeline two, uh, do a pause. If you do right click here, you, you know, you go ahead and do more conditions. Uh, you can add a sleep, which is like a pause or wait time. So this would be a thousand milliseconds. So that, you know, it's like adds uh, one second of a wait time and um, come in here and do the next thing, uh, which could be um, projectors or screens, set it to transparent, uh, visible, set it to visible, and so on and so on. So you create a whole um, user interface and button stack with this. If we come here and we switch the mode, you know, up here is like a little icon where you can switch the mode. And uh, this brings us to the new representation that we've just done in our block programming. So this shows us the little code and now we could carry on programming in here. Obviously, then we can switch back to our block programming mode. Okay, um, now we have created our action. I come into my button stack. I switch it to edit mode. And I come here and go to my button stack module. And now I trigger my action stack. And I save that. And now I complete, have the complete control and just, you know, it's like trigger my action that I just created here. Okay. Good. Um, anything else? We One thing that I'm I really think is really cool. Uh, in the API, we created some some API calls, which are a not just a call. Yeah, you know? they do something. So I can do an API call that says, "Okay, timeline one, um, fade down in 50 frames, in 10 frames, or something like that." 
And that's something you can do externally from the API or you can do the call from within Pixera control. And um, this is a simple switchboard and I created, it's not pretty, but you know, it does its thing. Come into the compositing and um, switch back to my, my HTML table that I created here. And I want to bring in the timeline one and I'm switching on timeline one. Um, now I want to jump to timeline two. You know, producer gives me a call, bring in timeline two, and it switches from timeline one to timeline two. And uh, this brings in timeline three. Okay. And if I have all three timelines up, that will actually switch to the correct state. Okay. You could do that nicer, you know, but just for demonstration purposes, I think that's just doing just fine. Yeah, okay. Even it works. Even it works. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's, sure. And it's, yeah, it's just like a really, really nice short shot box. Okay. Um, we have lots of modules in here. Like we have drivers like... Um, tools from Benjamin Miller, Barco, Invent, Master, Image Pro, Bird Dog, um, Bitfocus, Blackmagic, and so on. So the, the drivers are actually the third-party remotings. Um, come back here, protocols, just what it says. ADS is a backup um, protocol. So all the in-out modules from a company called Backoff are uh, pre-programmed there. You can interact with that um, automatically. Um, Artnet, uh, DMX, Multicast, OSC, MIDI, TCP, UDP, um, HTTP client and server, and it works. Um, Yuzuke, a good friend uh, in, in Japan, did some um, Aquilon module with that, uh, really amazing. Uh, MIDI, TCP, we had that. Wake on LAN is important. Tools generators, math generators, text. How long is the text? Uh, replace, reverse, text combiner, uh, to upper string, lower string, and so on. Uh, UI, forget that. Um, Q applied actions, I'll come to that later, and other helper modules. Okay. Um, wake on LAN, that's always something you're going to need an installation. Um, Something that people always kind of interest, how do you, do you get information into the system and out of the system, okay? And that's gonna be my last part before we switch over. Um, I did that here with UDP because it's the most obvious and most easy to interact with. And I extracted queues out of the timeline one. And now those queues are supposed to send data to a UDP receiver, you know, it's like, uh, we have that client who always has a couple of UDP um, audio playback devices and you just trigger them via UDP. And you go and check what kind of data you send to that receiver. Um, pretty obvious, we have our module and it has its IP, it has its port, um, port receive and so on and so on and so on. Um, good. We go in and initialize this. And here we have actually the, almost the same module that we, um, that we route the data to. And now when I hit the Q2 apply, or the timer would hit, uh, hit Q2, then it would send pause to that given IP uh, address via, via TCP. Okay, let's initialize the UDP receiver. And then we actually can, should be able to see, well, come here. There we go. Um, that we send out the data and we are receiving the data, we're coming in here. And now we distribute the data because here what we did was the following, we created conditions. And it's pretty easy because you open, you do right click and you tell the system, okay, set a condition. And once you do that, you just type in your condition in here. Yeah. 
And as it's Lua and you're expect, expecting strings, you will need to put that into... Um, exp um, what, what are those called? They're not parentheses. Quotation marks. Quotation marks. Thank you so <laughs> much, Martin. Um, and it works with single quotations and with double quotations. One thing I just learned, um, because we had the problem that we had to str sing the um, strings to, to the Aqualon, and uh, that data, those data sets had um, double quotations inside of them. So the good thing was, if you put that into single quotation marks, it would still work. Yeah, great. So we set it, and we set a condition, and um, you just check if that condition matches. Um, if it doesn't match, then you might want to create an else. So you create a dependency and you check for that condition again. It's like, is it a different string? You know, is it a different value or is a value between a given um, given state? You know? So um, if the condition is not hello, then that queue will not be called. If the data is paused, then we do call Q5 and so on and so on. So that's a way to actually create um, create um, conditions and to check for variables. And we had the, uh, the thing that uh, especially people, you know, it's like when you have a quest run out there and you just define strings, you send strings, you, you route your strings and according to the strings that you receive, you just do different actions. And everything you put behind that action, you know, that's completely up to you. That's programming, that's just simple data, okay? So, that's the beginning of Pixera Control. It does lots of other things. Yes, we do have a calendar. Yes, we do status. We do receive a status. Uh, you know, like that is a button. And uh, if you come down here, that button actually checks via CSS. Is it pressed or is it not pressed? So if it's not pressed, it gives us a red and a disconnective. If it's pressed and we receive a one, then we know, okay, the uh, connection has been established. And you can do that with, um, you know, it's like uh, with a Pixera heartbeat. You can do that with a TCP check. You can do that uh, with a PJ link projector and, and all that stuff. Yeah, so much for that. Um, okay, I'm just running through all those things. Do you have any questions about this? Uh, the library. Yep. Can it, uh, will it be updated regularly or can I build my own devices? You will be able to build your own devices. Okay, so what great. I usually do is when I create my own devices is I go in here and just grab the, the, the basic module that I want to have. Um, I come in here and it's just empty. And it just has a bit of user interface. I just throw that away and go and start do my own actions you know and uh, that's exactly what um benjamin miller is going to talk about now how to create <laughs> your own actions how to create your own user interfaces how to create your own modules benjamin yes and any, any 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 anybody else who has questions up until here no, Benjamin, hit it. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Benjamin Müller. Uh, the, the most of you know me. Oliver Kilian told you um, I'm one of the um, operator for the first time um, using using control last year, I think it was, um, and programmed a lot of the modules. So um, let me switch to my try to switch to my computer you all see it yep okay we perfect. Have. um it's simply the same um a few more modules like uh vmix psn um, fidgets optitrack uh, nat nat motor for tracking devices um the rest is i think st uh, still the same if you if you know um, companion from Bitfocus. Uh, the most of the modules that are in Companion, um, it's really easy to to implement in 
Pixera control because they are all HTTP, UDP or TCP. And just take a look at the uh, basic examples for, for HTTP, TCP, um, UDP, and you will simply get the most of the uh, um, modules from other devices, from, from other um, really simple in Pixera control. What is if this is not enough, if you or we switch to later on the on the custom side, first of all, I, I will show you a, a little module that I built for a cus, for a client um, where you can see it's just a, a simple playback solution for for a stadium, for a football game, basketball game, um, volleyball game and so on and so on. And this is not just, OK, I play one timeline, I play the next timeline. It's more like we have an Excel sheet with all the files in it and a time that's running. So the first one is running 30 seconds. The second one is running 10 seconds. And the system imports this file or even more files and make all the stuff on the timeline live. So when I hit here, go, I will show you the next timeline because this is not, he switched all the files. I can make it in a web browser that you can see it better. All the time, all the files are switched. The cues are switched, the time, the timings. When it goes to the next one, it's switched automatic, automatically the next timeline. You can see it in a preview completely. So everything is uh, in real time. It's locked to time. You can make a logging on it. So it stamps all the, all the animations that are running. And so this is one of the uh, modules that going some kind of crazy because uh, there are a lot of function, a lot of the, um, interaction with everything what's in control. So if you sing on it, can I do it with control? I will tell you, yes, you can. <laughs> One step further, um, when you, when, the, sys, uh, when the, the module you want to write or when the, the protocol is not as simple as TCP or UDP um, or HTTP, then of course you can, let me pause this, then you can add um, your custom DLLs. So you can program custom C++ code, load this um, DLL into Pixera control and have all the control of uh, USB devices, um, touchscreen devices and everything that's not, what not been easy uh, to program in, um, in, the normal, in the normal way. So here you see a, a fidget device. Um, it's a simple encoder uh, for, yeah, where you can put it on a camera for tracking the, the focus or the zoom. Um, you see it's really fast. It's eight milliseconds update rate. So you can make it with, with um, RFID, with even PSN. I built an, an PSN input module and an OptiTrack NutNet module. And even there, you can go one step further. You can make your own sub UIs. So when I init this PSN module, we have here a tracker that is connected. But when I will go fast, I don't want um, to go to, uh, through this whole framework. I will make a fast connection to the direct API from Pixera. So you can make your own editor, your own UI, and route everything to what you want. So that the tracking is go from, from the input to a direct um, connection, direct 
tracking di engine connection in Pixera. So even that, um, you're full uh, open with custom um, custom applications, custom UIs within Pixera. And you have um, all the access every time within control. So everything you see in the, Pix in the, in the API documentation is here in the Pixera, or you can just type in the code if you're more familiar with code, with coding. No problem. Um, you are everything what you think you can do, you can do. I think, yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Any questions? Thank you so much, Benny. <laughs> I was going really fast. Sorry for that. <laughs> no problem. I, th I think uh, the, the introduction is just good enough for this one hour session. So basically, the point we want to get over is that we have pre-programmed modules that you can interact with, and that is going to grow over time. More and more, you will see, you, you will see more, more modules coming along. Uh, to directly interact with the 30 third party devices. But we just want you to know that if there's something is not there, um, it is possible to get either people to program interactions that you need, um, like Benjamin Miller, or we have um, a company called DVS. Um, they're actually, they, they programmed a bright time module um, and we will, over the time, we will have um, a website where we'll, we'll promote those people who actually create custom modules um, who might be able to um, do some custom integration for you. And uh, our, our goal one day would be that we have a website where we have uh, custom modules so that you can download. Um, and eventually have a shop system that um, you can interact with uh, and just get your modules from. That would be our far goal um, for the, let's say, end of the year or next half of next year, something like that. Okay, any questions? Thank you so much, Benny. That was amazing. Is this included in all licenses? licenses? Okay, uh, it is included um, that you can import everything into all the licenses. We're going to have three uh, three licenses. Um, Pixera Gate, and that's like the basic module, and that's gonna be in, included in all Pixera um, systems. So every time you run a Pixera system as a master, you will have Pixera control and but that will be limited to eight modules. Um, you will be able to import modules from, from external people. So let's say you, you buy a module or you, you get a module for free somewhere and uh, that you can import. Um, exporting, you will need a Pixar control license for that. Pixar control is going to be 1,500 euro. And um, the thing is that Pixar Control will give you the ability to import as many uh, modules or um, create as many modules as you want to have in that project. And you will be able to um, work with two masters in a system. And we're going to have an uh, inter-host uh, operation. Um, we, we will hear about that later on as well. Um, the horses just asked me, gate is, gate is in the software as well. We are always going to have the, uh, the ability to work with 10 modules, if it's our hardware or not. Um, okay. So this is going to be Pixar control core. And you can have that as a standalone version or as a um, long on the dongle with your, with your director or with a server or your play license. And then we're going to have another license. It's going to be Pixar Control Enterprise. 
It's going to be 3,000 euro. And it's going to have something that's called Portal. And it's going to be more of a... Um, um, in the, the Enterprise is... Um, and the Portal is a user authentication module. Do you see my monitor once more? Benny, can you confirm that yes. you see my monitor? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so we have the portal module. I'm going to log in as admin. Admin. Okay. Oh, I changed the IP on the system. Okay, I would need to reload in a different versions. Okay, anyway, uh, what it does basically, it gives you the, the ability to create multiple users with their, all, all with their own account, with their own password. And um, coming back to any kind of user interface or module, we can actually, let me look for one. Um, let's see, properties, you have the, the ability to create permissions. So permission could be any constraint, so it could be mar permission for marketing, could be permissions for the house technicians, could be permission, uh, tablet tour guide A, tablet tour guide B, C, or stuff like that. So everybody would get its own um, front end and user interface that uh, this person is able to interact with. Um, we are going to break this down onto to modules and onto actions so that um, you could really break down the authentication for different uh, interaction possibilities. Um, once more inside of a light tab here, I see my local module. One, later on, we're going to see all the masters we have here. So let's say it's a bigger installation and uh, we have multiple masters. I'm going to be able to manifest this module on a different system. So I can actually program this module um, right here. I can get the data of this module right here, but then it can come in and type and just send it off to another IP, basically. So this, I would be seeing this module right here, but this would be actually been working on a different PC on a different Pixaro instance. So um, this would be for remoting, uh, bigger systems, uh, decentralized systems, and huge installations. Any questions about that? Okay. Um, yes, I have a question. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> do, do, do you confirm we'll be able to run Pixara Control on a standalone machine, meaning not on a video server? Yes. Yes. And in that configuration, how can we bring in time code to the slave the timelines? Um, you will, you are going to need the, um, the, the LTC, the SMT uh, dongle that we have currently. We want to have the ability to bring in um, MIDI time code as well, um, but that's just not there yet. It's but, on the roadmap. Uh, um, I was thinking I... of something like Arnet, Artnet timecode, for instance, which is very convenient and simple. Mark. Yeah, but could I jump in there? One thing you could do is, um, sorry, is just um, use the standalone system, but you don't, the Pixera you control doesn't have to be on that system. So you can drag in a Pixera, which is on a different system, a Pixera device. That would be the easiest way to have your logic on one system, but then have it use the API to call a Pixera on the on a different system. So at that point, the, the logical system just evaluates what it needs to do, but the time code sync is is the normal Pixera time code sync. You know what I mean? I mean the just the, the Pixera that you're controlling 
does not have to be the Pixera uh, that Control is running on. Understood. Yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, okay. Uh, I'm sorry. From from how I understood, the question was actually rather okay. If it was really standalone without Pixera so media server, how do we get timecode into the system? Okay. Mm -hmm. Th that was the initial intent. Oh, I'm sorry. Then I misunderstood. Uh, okay, <laughs> but uh, would would be um, MIDI timecode? Would be, that be okay for you? Usually, when I can, I'm trying to avoid MIDI timecode. Okay. What What do you suggest? We open totally uh, open suggestions. I I don't know if you have heard um, an interface made by a company in the Netherlands called um, Visual Production. They have the timecode takes LTC in and it turns it into ArtNet timecode. It's a basic UDP string, yeah. very easy to parse, and yeah. it's great because it makes it available on any laptop without getting a physical dedicated uh, timecode interface. Thank you for bringing and, and, that up. And also for us, because we use a lot of virtualization, so we tend to run a control system in virtual machines. Mm -hmm. So we can't have a physical timecode interface. And again, trying to avoid MIDI. Okay, good. So um, timecode via Artner, basically. Yeah. It okay. uh, should but be not it's... a big problem because um, we get already um, Artnet in. And this is just a modification from the module, I think. Uh, so it would not be the big problem to get it inside in control. Yeah. Okay, I got it on the list and Olivier, I don't know if you can see that right now, but um, we have integrated the IO core to you. Hmm. From, from visual productions. Okay. So that we can directly interface with, uh, with the IO core system. Okay. And Good. I guess we could write our own module to just pass this incoming UDP tank code, which comes from Artnet format and turn it into a variable which slaves the timeline. Yes. Fine. Perfect. Sim simply Fine. said. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, Olivier, that, that's you, is it? Yeah, that's you. Um, I, yes. and I think we're in discussion of actually integrating Isaac with. Uh... Yes, that's another team in my company and I'm not exactly uh, on top of what you're doing right now but yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay yeah, yeah i heard I something about infocom yeah i could say i can maybe give a, a short comment on that uh marcus imatinga on our side and, and mitch and zach have been are currently working on just getting a basic communication up and running and it should be you know this week that we can uh see the, the beginnings of the Pixera uh, control Isaac module. So it's currently currently being worked on right now. Great. Thank you. A anybody else? Okay. So while we have Martin as well, Martin wanted to present a kind of a look into the future. So he, Martin is our, sorry about that, our software, software, Martin, well, what's your strategist? Sorry about that, our software strategist. And he is going to share a, an outlook into the future and what we, where we want the system to go to in the future. Martin, can you take it away? I'll do my best. I need to share here. It's not going to be spectacular. I'll tell you that much. Um, start Uh, I'm sorry, I wasn't. Uh, oh, you just kind of switched over, and I wasn't. I <laughs> didn't have it over open yet. Um, now, how do I request? Here we go. Yeah. Can you see my um, my computer? Yes. Confirmed. Right. 
Okay, um, this is about inter-host interaction. Um, what I have here is, sitting over here, is just a um, simple module triggered by a different module. And all it does is print out action one. Now, what I've done here, though, is started Pixera again. This is um, only possible currently in a development version, and it won't be possible anything we re release. This is just so we can work with it on a single system. So you have to imagine that this is running on one system, on one PC, and this is running on a different PC. Now, um, there are two settings which I've uh, entered here. And the first one is under control, under the control tab, enter that it's supposed to participate in a control group. And I gave them this project name because that's the name of the project, Test 11. And this system also has entered here that it is um, part of control group one. You can use any name, just has to be the same. What this leads to is that in the live systems, oop, see here. one moment, please. Nope, I'm sorry, I should have stopped. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> that should not have happened. See, this is a version I'm really, I was working on today, and I uh, apparently still a bit iffy. Let's see what we have here. Um, we forgive you, Martin. We love seeing your strategy at work. <laughs> Thank you. It's <laughs> very kind of you. Uh, and I hope that uh, the version, first version of you, of this you have in your hands will be uh, a little bit more robust. Um, right, but I did those, I entered those settings. And what I can now see is that the two systems are, um, are visible to one another. And so this is where I could list uh, any number of systems to, um, to become part of an overall control system. And now I can do things like take a module and move it over to a different system. And now if I do, um, let's open the, this here. If I hit this action here, what we'll see is it's actually being executed over there. If I move this over here, I'm now running, if you look over here, action two. So this has now become a view of this system. It's local here, and this is viewing it. I can still work with it. I can edit its UI. I can edit its it's um, it's text. Let's just put something in there. But it'll be executing um, on the other system. If I want to take it back, go like this. And now I'm back to local. I could remove all its views. You can also go ahead and add a view by just dragging in the system. Now I'm running, and I've dragged in a module, this, the, the module called module, on in project test 11. And I'm running it from this view. If I go here, if I click on the view, go like this, I see the remote connections it has. So on a different system, it, test 11 mod one, action one, is invoking action two. That's this connection right here. Go ahead, remove the views and everything is how it started out. And um, what you can also do is uh, you can use these, these um, project names anywhere in any code. So if I, um, well, that's not, that might be confusing. I'm not gonna call it module. I'm gonna st uh, start an action here and say, uh, just call it action one. 
And if I'm uh, writing code for this action, or any code anywhere, I can go ahead and use the, the names of the projects, call it test 11, mod one, action one. This action wasn't executed locally, rather it knew the module is supposed to be test 11. So went over to test 11, found mod one and ran the action here. You can see it down here. And um, yeah, those are, it's not very spectacular because we only have actions doing things like writing out action one, action two. But I hope you get some idea of what we're trying to achieve that breaking out of um, the scope of a local system and allowing you hopefully relatively comfortably to uh, use one system to start influencing other systems. Um, another way you'll be able to look at a different system is, uh, I don't know if this, this is already in here, right? Yeah, is launch VNC. So uh, it's not gonna work now or it's basically gonna be an endless loop since it's actually one system. And this is gonna move to the inspector where it makes more sense. But uh, that's another thing you'll be able to do is just to go on any system in, the, um, in all your live systems and go launch VNC. So then you'll be able to access that system and do things that maybe you'll need to do in other tabs uh, of that Pixera instance. This is, I've, I've obviously have trouble switching between the tabs. Sorry, guys. Uh, a relatively basic functionality, switching between the tabs, which I've managed to destroy. Um, but um, it won't, it'll be fixed soon. Again, uh, these are, um, that's the, have I started, have I lost the other one? There we go. You will be able to, um, to visit other systems via uh, VNC and um, via all these mechanisms of establishing views or using explicitly using the names of the, of the other projects in code. And I hope as time goes on, we'll have some examples which make it a, li a little bit more uh, haptic to see what's, what's going on instead of just uh, printing out um, action one in the log window. Okay, um, any questions? Can I, Ali, can I get back to you now? Do you guys know how I can get out of the presenter? Here we go. So you <laughs> okay. can see me again. Thank you so much, Martin. That was a, a, a good outlook. Um, yeah, Martin is just working on the backbone. And uh, once we're getting all that done and out of the way, we're going to uh, do more brushing for the calendar. We're going to do more brushing on the modules, on the MIDI module, and all that other stuff. And then we will eventually and finally get to version one you know, yeah. sometime. But I see Alan has a question. Alan? Yes. Um, since everything is shared between uh, Pixera control systems potentially, because you can mirror and, and access it, is it feasible down the road that systems could be mirrored or set in a mode that's uh, like a distributed risk redundancy where yeah. uh, a primary and a backup can be uh, aware of all the settings of the other system, and if they need to take over, they can pick up where the other one left off. Yeah, that's uh, that's a different functionality, um, kind of orthogonal to to that. But we're we're also working on that under the roof of multi-user. And uh, what I showed was you you can you can have systems that do different things, where they have different modules on them, um, communicate. But the other axis is you'll be able to take um, those systems and with a similar kind of setting where you give them one multi-user group, you'll be able to take each of those systems which do different things and then give them kind of a sister system, which uh, just like you said, um, mirrors whatever the original system is doing. And then you can go ahead and, and say in that, in, in those systems, which are doing the same thing, 
And then, of course, only one of them could do it because of all the external connections they may be having. Uh, you can activate one of them. So it'll try to take over all the connections uh, that the other one previously had and fulfill its role. Uh, it'll take over the project name. It'll be the representative of that project to all the other systems, which maybe which will keep on doing their different things. So in short, uh, the answer is is yes, but it'll be a slightly different mechanism. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. Another thing I might mention as a, or Ali, I think you, you touched on that a bit, is that um, regarding user management and uh, access to the system via um, web UIs, um, we're really uh, sensitive, sensitive to, the, to the issue of security. And we'd like people to be able to distribute those UIs uh, without worrying about compromising their overall system. And a bit of a problem uh, that's, that's tied into that is that uh, on the one hand, we've tried to make uh, Pixera Control like a distributed extensible API. So everything is about making it easy to add new modules, add new actions, and have those be available everywhere. And like I just showed you now, if you, if you are on one node using this project uh, approach, uh, you can reach any action in the entire distributed system. So that's great from a perspective of quickly granting different, different people access, but it's not that great from a security standpoint. And uh, as you all know, uh, the, the JavaScript sides of browsers are, are basically an open book to anyone that just manages to reach, let's say, the Chrome development environment. And then they could start entering API uh, commands. So what we're doing now is, and that's gonna be part of the portal uh, mechanism, if you have users, you'll be able to whitelist the the actions that user can access over, over the, the connection they're logged in with. And anything else, by default, you have one global setting to say, I'm gonna enter this safe mode, and then anything coming over the connection you specify uh, that is not on the whitelist will be rejected on the server side. So that way, if it's a, if it's a security critical application, uh, or there's a point where at least the security constraints on the people using these web UIs are much lower than those uh, on the people that, let's say, configure the system and have access to the server room. In that case, you can um, narrow down the whitelist for the people uh, that have access to the web UI and then be certain that they can only see the system no matter what they do to their browser that they can only access the system over those specific actions you have allowed them to use. And that's part of this work on infrastructure, which we're currently trying to wrap up, or hopefully in the final stages. And then as Oliver said, our main focus is going to shift uh, to just brushing, 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 brushing. Did I say brushing? Uh, we'll be brushing the UX um, just in wave after wave to make this stuff, which we think we've, you know, made it pretty powerful, but uh, we're gonna be just really driving into making it easy. Great, so that's, that would be my uh, overview of like the next couple of phases of, of pushing control forward. Mark, Back thank to you, Ali. Thank you so much, Martin, for this amazing outlook uh, into the future and about the next steps. So as said, we hope that um, um, next two months, three months, we're going to have a release version for that. If you're interested in the beta test, um, please let me know, drop me an email. Um, this is a really, really brief introduction. And uh, if you want to dive deeper into that, just drop me an email, a private message. Uh, you know, it's like, get in touch. I'll, uh, we will get you the the um, the access to the beta version, and the beta version is currently not licensed. So um, you have access to all the functionality and play around with it, 
and uh, test it. Um, if you want to create a module, please do so. Um, get in touch with me and uh, we have something special for everybody who gives feedback of who passes in a, um, a module. Um, we have some uh, a surprise in store for you, so please test it out. Take it for a ride. Please give feedback and let us know what you think. Any questions? And I, did I mention that I'm doing one and ones because that's much more easy than the, the, the you know, it's like doing that with 23 people um, because everybody has a different approach to show control. And, um, you know, it's like that makes it just much easier. Peter. Uh, quick question. Would you be adding like uh, template GUIs to use as a starting point? just to start exploring and whatnot. Right now, I'm not finding any in the beta that I downloaded yesterday. Um, the, the GUI is uh, and the user interface elements are being reworked currently, and we have a designer to create new design elements. And uh, so we'll see, see where this takes us. We don't have any plans for version one to add like user interface elements in, as a library. Um, but that could be something for later versions, for like a 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 something like that. Okay, Martin, great. Martin, would you agree or? Um, yeah, sure. That's um, to add in elements later. Um, but I, I want to make sure I understood the question, Peter. Did you say were you expecting like kind of pre-built GUIs to kind of show uh, show a tip show typical use cases? Or were you speaking of individual widgets, individual elements in the in the GUI? No, just a simple starter GUI, like timeline control, start, stop, queue, queue control, just to use oh. as a starting point to go, oh, I, that's what I'm looking for. And oh. I can copy and duplicate. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Duplicate. Hold, hold on. OK. Um, what we have currently is, um, sorry, you should see my screen once more. What we have is elements like we have the Q browser, we have the playlist editor, we have, um, so Q browser, um, okay, give me Pixera, Pixera, okay. Give me timeline one, give me the cues. Ah, great, great, that's exactly. So, Thank yeah, you. So, so that would be one, or the other thing would be what we have is the, um, like a playlist editor. So hold on, let's take that out of the way. Um, so fiddle around with that. We have the resource browser and that gives you all the resources and uh, that, that are integrated here. Uh, I think I have a module. You, you know, Oli, though, the, those are all um, uh, contained in that one control. What might be interesting is just to have some demo I don't know. I don't know if that's what you meant, Peter, but I, I thought it, it, might, it might be interesting to have just some demo uh, user interfaces, just some modules which do some which do some basic user interfaces that you can then start from, like basically like some of those that you've been building, Ollie, to have yeah. those in the installer uh, to to look at. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. I'm a visual learner uh, to start, and then I dive into the code. So okay. that would help. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, and w one more thing, um, because you've seen doing the code inside of Pixaro with Lua and everything, you can actually via uh, via JavaScript you can integrate your own um, your own modules, uh, your own user interface elements. So if you have, I don't know, special things you want to do, you can do that inside of Pixaro control as well. We have actually. Or is it the framework um, that is a module that I talked about from DVS, the company DVS, and they created their own interface for the BrightSound module, and it is uh, its own user um, user interface element. Um, John created that via JavaScript and integrated that. If you're interested in that, 
um, inside of our Teams channel. If you're not in, in our Teams channel, please let me know and I will add you to that as well if you're interested. And we have a couple of resources. So this is our Teams channel. And, uh, you know, it's like people post things and Benny is like, yes, yeah, I'm having a new module created. And uh, we have our folders and um, we have a circle label that just describes how Martin created new interface element. And uh, we have a couple of videos here um, where Martin, you know, shares knowledge, how he does things, how he did things. And this shares, uh, of Here's the user interface dialing and the custom controls, uh, how he actually created the uh, the interaction with the user interfaces, if you're interested in that. 